Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, I've worked on a couple things uh, since we last got together. You saw I got the I got the windscreen on. I think I showed that in the last video. I have to paint my brackets here before I put them on. Um, I've got some uh, some paint in my bucket over there. <clears throat> so I started um, I started working on working on the brake situation. Um, and mostly I was just kind of gathering the materials that I need for that and I'm missing something so I've got the uh, the 2024 T4 uh, bar that I need and that basically gets bent over this so that it has a particular radius to it I'm, I'm using an inch and a quarter because in, when it's through bending it's going to be more like an inch and a half um, but I, uh, uh, I don't have the angle that I need. There's a, there's a piece, um, um, that's required, uh, and I don't, uh, I need a, a piece of angle. I have all my scrap aluminum here, and I have lots of channel and stuff, but I, I don't have the size angle that I need, and so I'm gonna have to, uh, gonna have to order a small piece of that so that I can work on that then I'll then I'll hop onto the brakes um, you can see I've been working on the elevator um, and I've got uh, <clears throat> I've got that uh, set up now where where I've got my 30 degrees uh, up and I've got my 15 degrees down so elevators working perfectly uh, I did have to uh, I've got to come back and put some fabric on the bottom corner of my rudder because when the uh, elevator was in its full-up position, my rudder was actually hitting the bolt. Um, so I made sure I've got at least a quarter-inch clearance when I pull the elevator as hard as I can um, just to make sure there's no chance that my rudder can, uh, can hit. So... <clears throat> It just has a little rounded off bottom now, and so I just have to go in there with a piece of fabric and put that on to uh, seal that up. And uh, so I'll take care of that. And then I got my my uh, I got my block in here for where I'm mounting, basically putting a, a zip tie for my static tube. And uh, the uh, all I did was take a uh, take a block. And I put um, uh, bent a piece of wire and put it through the block and then bent it over on the other side and sort of made a little channel for it to fit in there. And then I epoxied that up underneath there. So that just gives me a little loop that I can, because um, <clears throat> if I ever have to access those for any reason, they'll be real easy to just clip the zip ties and, and uh, take those down. But it's great. Hides them, um, gets them up out of the way. Uh, so... I still need to drill the hole for uh, for the other one, so I might as well uh, I might as well measure for that. Oh, I was going to tell you, um, I've been taking some uh, uh, some weight uh, information down, and uh, my calculations as of now, after weighing a half painted aileron and which I did paint the uh, bottom of the aileron over there. Um, with a half-painted aileron and a half-painted wing uh, and the airplane here as it sits, it appears as though I'm going to end up at um, 335 pounds um, as my, my completed weight. <coughs> And I'll test the wing again after uh, after I get uh, uh, after I get the after I get it fully painted and the cover for the fuel tank's not going to weigh much, but I did have the fuel tank in it when I when I weighed it. So um, basically, that um, plus me plus ten gallons of fuel puts me right at gross weight. So uh, I'm pretty happy with that. Not. Uh, Considering I have a you know the 45 horsepower half VW, um, and uh, 
everything else being pretty standard except you know as you know I used uh, uh, I used Douglas fir for the for the whole plane so there's a there's a weight penalty to pay there for uh, for doing that um, even though it's um, stronger um, uh, you do uh, you do definitely pay a, a bit of a weight penalty I'm I'm gonna take a guess that that penalty was about 15 pounds um, I don't know exactly uh, what it is, but that's my that's my guess that I would have been around maybe 320 uh, if I uh, if I hadn't used that, and, and I, I could be off a little. But another thing that I've been working on is I had to make some. I needed to get some UHMW uh, sheet to go underneath my cables here, and so I think I'm just going to use some RTV or something. Uh, to just put this on. I'm not sure exactly how to do it yet, but I'll get that in place and then that'll keep, as this slaps around, that'll protect the, uh, you can just see where it's left a little bit of black on here just from operating it and having it move around. So I've got two of those. Uh, I'll get to, I'll get those in place and that'll protect that leading edge area there. And I think that's all that's all I've been that's all I've been up to. Um, and so now uh, I'm going to uh, my elevator after I got it on um, even though the the hole is drilled in the right location on the back, I did have to extend it a bit. Um, I had to go a little bit further, a little bit higher, and so I just took my Dremel and uh, kind of took care of that. And so I've got, I mean, just made sure I had really good clearance all the way around uh, for for that. But I bolted it on before um, before I got my. I haven't bolted it here with the hinges. I only bolted it. All I got to do is take off that one, the one bolt that goes through the clevis. But uh, uh, I still have to put my uh, drain grommets on the bottom of my uh, elevator. So I do need to take it back off just to take care of that. So, yeah. So now I'm going to jump over and get the fabric sealed on the top of the wing. And so that I can, uh, so that I can get this painted. Oh, I did forget. Uh, I actually did get the uh, fuel tank. Uh, I got my fitting, got my fitting installed in the fuel tank, and so, and then I got my my installation um, completed. So, uh, why my urethane turned yellow? I'm not exactly quite sure. I'm getting to the bottom of the can and and I'm guessing whatever makes that flat, uh, there's maybe more of it in the bottom of the can. I should, probably should have stirred it up. Um, but uh, it's still, it's sealed really good. It's just a weird color. Um, but I've got foam, uh, thin foam between this member and the tank and here I've got that foam that I put back here and the tank is just rock solid here I mean I can move the entire wing just by moving trying to move the tank uh, so it's in there nice it's got the foam on the forward edge uh, it's got foam underneath it and it's got foam here at the back edge and so the uh, uh, the outlet for the tank matches up really well to uh, to the hole there, the tube comes right out nice and smoothly. So we've got that part done. All that's left here is to uh, is to put the uh, uh, put the uh, Lexan cover um, in place. So and then I uh, like I said before, I just want to put some put some foam around the tank on these corners here and right here where it's gonna maybe risk rubbing against these uh, gussets right here so um, 
I'll either put the foam on the wood or I'll put it on the tank. But either way, just want a little extra protection there. So I am going to uh, remove the tank and and uh, get this uh, uh, fabric clean, get my iron out, iron down all of my tapes, and then after that uh, we'll be prepared to um, get the paint on the top side, the brown. We'll paint the green later. And I've been really thinking about this. I may actually be able to uh, uh, put the uh, push my plane out into the driveway, and then I can and then I can um, just slide the wing in. If I had if Parker and I could slide it in, and then I could just kind of quickly mark my green lines. Um, and all I gotta do is move the Jeep. This is the left wing, so if I just move the Jeep out of the way and push the plane out, I've got the whole front yard there. I can just easily slide the wing in. I think that's probably what I'll end up doing so that I can go ahead and get it completely painted. And then it's figuring out where, where, where am I gonna store it while I work on number two here, so. All right, cool. I'll get to work. Okay, so I got uh, all the top of the wing sealed up. So that'll soon be ready for ready for the brown paint. And uh, in the meantime, I took my elevator off, and I've got my drain grommets um, installed. So just put them right over the paint. It's no big deal. Sticks fine. Um, not concerned about that. So uh had to take off my part of my the one half of my trim tab because some of them went underneath it. But I'll get that uh once I get these painted and everything and I've got a little bit of a little bit of touch up to do anyway from this elevator just sitting around, so I'll get that handled, then I'll be able to get the elevator back on. And I'm going to figure out uh, how I want to connect to my trim tab. Um, trying to figure out which exactly which uh, connector I want to use. I think I'm going to use one of those Bowden cable connectors that slips onto the cable and then tightens up onto it. And uh, <clears throat> with maybe a clevis. Uh, well, I guess it, yeah, it has threaded end, but this is so such lightweight that uh, I don't want to do anything too heavy. I'm just going to do a Z-bend in the cockpit, so um, no reason to do anything additional there. But I may get one of those uh, barrel-type connectors. Um, uh, yeah, I think I know what I'm going to do, so something that can screw onto that and then the rod can just go through it that would be ideal so I think that's probably what I'll do with the and it'll just have like a set screw or something um, that can be loctited in place so uh, yeah all right so on to it I'm gonna go uh, let that dry and as soon as that's dry we'll uh, start rolling brown all right all right, so I've got all three coats, uh, all three coats of brown on the wing, and I've uh, I was able to actually measure. There's really only one spot that needed to be dealt with, and it's just this one little area of brown here. It's really no big deal. That stays brown. Everything else I've marked out where my green goes. Uh, uh, this whole section is green, and. Uh, and then this is all brown right in here. And then this is green, comes from back there. Kind of see, I don't know if you can see the lines or not, but it goes out to here and then the whole tip area is green. So so what we'll do is, uh, I think it takes only two coats of green to cover. And then uh, once I get the two coats of green on, then I come back and I paint um, one more coat of brown where the brown is. So. That way I don't have to get too fussy with uh, um, the green edge. I can just kind of uh, paint that out and let it go and then come back and do the 
to the green. So I'm going to get going on putting the green on. And yeah. So I just got the uh, um, the green is is all done, and uh, I got the second or the last the fourth coat on the brown. So this is uh, what we have. Um, looks super good. It's still drying up there, but the, uh, the whole thing uh, just looks really super. So um, kind of excited about that. And whenever this uh, whenever this gets dry, the next thing. The next thing we'll be doing is right here, we'll get a 30 inch roundel. Um, um, you saw the one that's on the bottom, of course. And so this one goes on the top. This is the, the big blue field with the red dot in the middle, um, 12 inch red dot, 30 inch um, overall circle. So that's what we'll have there. And uh, Everything else looks great. I was able to just soften up that leading edge. I didn't want like a really hard line, so I wasn't, I was trying to get close, but I wanted to be, I wanted it to be just a little bit fuzzy. So, um, so I like the looks of that. And I think we're going to have a red machine gun cover painted right there. So, um, and that'll really set this whole thing, whole wing off. So, <laughs> Um, Got to do it right. All right, so thanks for hanging out with me. Um, you know I appreciate it. And uh, as always, I'll catch you later.